It's 90 degrees. Now, the way to adjust the motor or the blade, which is uh, basically the blade with the arbor and the motor, of course, and make it parallel to the runners is from two screws or a screw that is on the back and a screw that is on the front. And they're underneath this area right here. Uh, they're like right here. I can touch them right here. I'll show them to you in a little while. All right, so let me show you what you could do to align that if for some reason this is not parallel to the runners. You're gonna so I am using uh, just a regular caliper. What you want to do is make sure that your caliper is touching one of the edges right here and you're gonna touch one of the teeth um, of the blade. Make sure that you put a mark. I put a little uh, black dot that just uh, colored it with a sharpie just to make sure that I'm working with the same tooth. So I'm putting the the tooth on the back going to the edge of this uh, runner right here and to the edge the left edge of the tooth and just make sure that it's barely touching and tighten right there now what you want to do is make sure that it, if you could do it with a combination square it would be much much better I am barely touching there um, now, I want to make sure that it's the same tooth that I moved to the front. It was right here, so I'm moving it to the front around the same height. It really doesn't matter, but from here to here. And I'm going to go right here and measure the same distance to the bl from the blade to the runner. And I want to make sure that this is equal. If this is equal, of course, it means that they are parallel. The, the blade is parallel to the runners. If that is not the case, what you're gonna do is go to one of the screws. Okay, light is on. So let me show you what I mean. The hardest part is getting to those screws right there uh, that are very uncomfortable. Uh, let me see, I think this might be the off-center screw. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, take two. You might get some outtakes there. But <laughs> so basically, the hardest part is reaching those screws. You need an Allen key. Um, okay, well, this is the front, and this screw right here is offset. So whenever you turn it, it moves the blade side to side you want to have the one on the back loose and the one on the front loose as well so it can have some movement okay well i ended up turning this upside down so i could show you um the screws on the back are hard to get to because this extension table that i was talking about earlier sorry about the mess but gets on the way of those two screws and it's a pain. So now, these screws are pretty much a hold down or a clamp to the bar uh, so the uh, blade stays in place. I'll show you the bar in a little in a little while when I put it back up uh, or right side up. But basically, you wanna move this out of the way so you have more room there. And you definitely wanna take the extension table out, otherwise you won't be able to reach these screws okay we're on the other side now so this screws right here as i said um this two right there they're gonna be like a clamp and that one with the elongated slot the screw is offset so whenever you uh move it whenever you turn around it will move this back and forth making the blade move on this direction or having this uh, motion so if you move that it makes that goes uh, go side to side and it pivots on the back so the back should most likely stay on the same place the front is what moves back and forth but we're back up or on, on the top of the saw so I can show you where those 
screws are once again you're gonna have to go down there let me turn on the you're gonna want to go right there those screws right there um, and the hardest part is that the screws on the back you need to get the extension table back move that uh, like outfit kind of table on the back out of the way so you can have more room and then you have to be underneath moving this uh, moving this little screw right there um, and making sure that you have the same distance from here to here then from the front to here so that's what makes it complicated or more than complicated it makes it uncomfortable it is pretty easy again if you don't know how to do it is like you can't see but that's why I'm sharing this with you because it could help you in the future if it happens to you that's what you have to do another advantage of the table is that it's very light of course because it's plastic and be aluminum I don't know really but it's pretty reliable and it's very light I wanted to jump back into the into the runners the runners have this very annoying little tab right there and it could be very annoying when you don't know how to deal with them there are some table saws that have a straight uh, runner and then on the very bottom they have a, like a wider uh, slot or the T the T slot on the very bottom which makes the runner completely parallel over here and gives you more versatility so you can put any kind of uh, straight runner otherwise you have to work with this shape like that what I do is I make my runners to look like the original uh, rod that comes in there like um, and I just basically cut a uh, block of a, a thin piece of wood that is this thick and this wide and then I cut a couple of rabbits on the side like most tables they come with a push stick which is this one in this case you can store it right here and it's just literally a push stick I don't find it very uh, secure it I think it has a ruler yeah it has a ruler on the top as well that you could use to measure but uh, this is more of like we need to give him a push stick so let's put something right there but <laughs> it is really not that not that good I prefer so that's it for the top of the table which is pretty much everything but I want to still show you something underneath the table um, I think it's a fantastic deal uh, for the price I think it's around two hundred dollars still right now and uh, it is very good quality fantastic quality for the price and for being a contractor saw you can have great precision if you know how to use it if you get used to it if you give it some uh, TLC and give it enough maintenance um, I am always working on on the table and underneath the table because I want to keep it clean because I've realized that if you let it get a lot of sawdust um, it, uh, it it starts having some issues and, and it's just a matter of uh, putting your shop back underneath there and make sure that it's clean and making sure that everything is aligned and that all the bolts and knots are tight it is very decent something um, else real quick is you have your well your wrenches right there to change your blades and you also have a section over here where you can store your fence when you are not using it and then on the back you might have seen earlier there's some velcro straps because the base of it is collapsible which makes it great for um, a job site and in my case I do some custom works uh, for other people that ask me to build furniture or desks I am currently working on a floating desk so I am able to collapse that in attach it to the back of the table with those velcro straps and it's so light that i can just carry it all together and to go set it up whatever i need to go uh, i want to show you what's underneath and what you have to be on the lookout to avoid some issues and those issues start right here with this knob right here okay well the biggest issue with this is that 
first of all, of course, it gets sawdust underneath. So if you don't keep it clean, it could get into the threads of the bolt uh, that bring everything up and down. But sometimes this gets a little tight and it's not just that the threads of the bolts could have sawdust, but it could also be that some of the bolts that aligned all the rising mechanism are not um, aligned correctly or not tight correctly. I use it very often, pretty much every day. So every couple of weeks, every two or three weeks, I, it, as long as I start, or, or as soon as I start feeling that this is a little too tight, and the first chance I get, turn it upside down, clean it up, maybe put a little bit of um, bit of lubricant uh, just to help you bring it up and down. And I'm gonna turn it around so I can show you what I'm talking about. All right, so we're upside down. I wanted to show you that angle so you can see uh, what is what, what are you looking at. So we're gonna do go and look behind this area right here. All right, so let me try to show you. So take three, <laughs> the bolt on the bottom, which is this one right here that is covered with the plastic sleeve is uh, this one right here. Sorry, it's really hard to do this by looking at the camera rather than uh, the mechanism. So this right here is covered, uh, covering this bolt that goes through here and keeps this piece right here and this piece this other plate together um, this blocks right this block right here is what makes the blade go up or down if you turn the knob on the front this will if you see bring the table up or bring the table down this right. area right here is where you want to have pretty clean or decently clean. Um, if the block starts going sideways as it is right now, I don't know if you can, if you notice that angle, it means that of course this side is going higher than that. And that happens because of that dust right there, because of the dust on the uh, bolt itself, or because any of this screws are uh, uh, well actually that cr yeah either one of them could be loose I recently tightened this ones so they're pretty good but there is a very small clip right here holding this bolt to this assembly um, if you lose this little clip which looks like this ones I have some spare ones those kind of clips is what you get on this at the end of this threaded bolt that keeps this attached to the assembly plus the screw that is over right here this is a pan head uh, knot to that quarter 20 screw that goes all the way to over here but doesn't exit there um, and that's pretty much what you want to keep Clean what I clean these areas right here. There's this elongated um, uh, guide uh, guides right there. This um, let me see where's where is it? Right there. This little curve slot right there is where the block writes on each side. That could get a little dirty, and it makes it hard for the block to go up and down. So I use this three-in-one garage door cleaner and it helps a lot with my other table saw that is broken at the moment what happened is that this assembly right here the clip that goes here fell off and I couldn't find it of course so when I got it back from the Home Depot I said earlier um, this screw that is attached to the bolt on the bottom over here the cover the one that is covered with plastic basically the guy forced it in and stripped the screw and the knot I didn't know that I was trying to fix it um, yesterday or the day before and I realized that it's completely messed up so I got a new bolt and I got a new 
uh, knot is just a 1420 and this one is a, a three inches and a quarter but I got a three and a half because that's the only thing I could get and I'll cut it if I need to but I don't think it interferes with anything or I'll, I'll find out um, but in my case I lost the clip over here because I lost that knot the knot fell off this was loose the clip was not strong enough to keep everything together so that block the clip also snapped and the whole saw just whoosh, fell down uh, and it was impossible of course to bring it up and down it was just completely loose so if that happens to you that's what you want to keep uh, very uh, very clean or, or cleanish uh, because you'll never have it completely clean but make sure that your threads over here are good make sure that your knots are always here and um, uh, well tightened make sure that your clip is here because even when it's hard to see it's it's right there and sometimes because it's all cover and sawdust you don't realize if you have it there or not I'm going to show you what I do real quick because it's really not a lot I basically just go in here and make sure that there's not a lot of sawdust because that helps a lot I can't stress enough how important it is that you get make sure that those those two uh, screws on the back are always tight and that the clip is in place then what I do is I just put a little bit of lubricant right here I use the the garage door cleaner the three-in-one garage door cleaner because I feel like it sticks to it uh, longer than other lubricants and I just put a little bit there just so it has um, a little bit to help it up and up and down and as you saw earlier it was a little tight I'm gonna move the camera so I can turn around the table and you'll see that it makes a big difference just that makes a world of difference and I have another couple of weeks of work uh, or smooth work